Okay. So good evening everyone and might be good evening for those who are online. Or it could be also good morning, good afternoon if you're watching at your own time. Uh, very nice to be back and uh, uh, share some thoughts about this meditation course. Uh, some of you might have been here or listening last uh, week. Now we are doing session two for this uh, meditation course. Um, so I'm Eric. Uh, I'm sitting here in my real body in front of a camera <laughs> in Montreal. And, you know, the thought was really that meditation is becoming such a huge, um, I think, um, tool that many people want to use in their life, uh, that we felt it should be something available uh, for everyone, wherever people are. If they are far from the main cities where there are no meditation centers, we thought it would be very nice that they can uh, take benefit also from this uh, meditation course. So the deal is the following one. Uh, we have Lynn sitting in an invisible form by the computer, and she can also take your questions, comments, and she can share them with the mic so we can all hear it. And also um, you can write. We have an uh, email address, which is the hub at uh, ca.bramacumaris Dot org. So you can write or so, comment, ask questions, and there will be follow-up, of course, with this course. Um, so the first thing I'd like to share with you is a short meditation experience that will follow a little bit what we did last week. So I'll invite all of you listening right now to just sit very comfortably, just wherever you are, on your chair. No need to take any special posture. You just sit very, very comfortably and I'll just share a few thoughts and you can listen to them and use your own thoughts as well. So you may want to keep your eyes open so it becomes a very natural meditation. And you put your feet very nice on the ground, stable. You can feel the connection with the earth, the ground. And you put your hand that's on your knees, so you feel the connection, also you feel the body being very alert. And the first thought in meditation could be sometimes to experience the energy of the body and relax the body, just to feel how the body becomes so quiet, to feel the energy of the hands flowing through the body, energy coming from the feet upwards. And just imagine that every part of your body is relaxing, the legs, the back, the shoulders, your face. Just imagine your face becoming very, very relaxed very quiet. Even your eyes. Just see how your eyes can become so soft and gentle. And your whole physical energy becomes completely still. And you feel that the energy of the body is so strong, so beautiful. And it doesn't matter if your body is healthy at the moment, or if you're going through some cold or anything. Just put some beautiful light energy in the body. And in the same way that we can direct the body, we can make the body sit still and quiet in the same way you're just going to tell your mind that you want to be with your mind and make it a very quiet, peaceful mind. It's a beautiful thought to tell the mind, hey mind, be quiet. Hey 
mind be still. And just like that we feel that the mind becomes very peaceful. We can let go of any other thought. Just using the thought. My mind is very peaceful. And I'm just asking my mind to be quiet, to be peaceful, but also to feel strong, to feel that peace is not just being still, but it's also being full with energy, the energy of peace. the energy of tranquility. The energy of silence. So, very simple, very, I hope you're not all asleep now on your computer, but um, hopefully you're well awake and enjoying what we can do with the mind. So last week there were two thoughts basically. One was uh, being aware of what we're trying to accomplish through meditation. What do we want to experience, to achieve? And the second one was uh, an explanation of the power of the thoughts and the mind. And if you remember, we just shared that um, every thought has four characteristics. So I'm sure you must be remembering it. And the first characteristic of the thought is the speed. We have the depth, the direction, and the quality. And I don't know if you had time during the week to notice the speed, the depth, the direction, and the quality of your thoughts. but. I'm sure that just over a few minutes we can appreciate that there is a great fluctuation in all of these four characteristics. And so I won't go back into the details of each one because that was uh, last week, but maybe the other element uh, I feel is quite inspiring about the, the mind and the thoughts is that when we think about the quality of thought, it could be positive, negative, functional or waste. You know, these are the four characteristics of the quality of thoughts. And sometimes we wonder what is a positive thought, what is a negative thought. So we find that positive thoughts are usually coming from values, beautiful values, universal values, peace, love, patience, tolerance, values that bring, you know, beauty in the thought, but also a constructive energy to the thought. And then you have destructive energy, negative energy that tends to generate pain or malaise, you know, a kind of discomfort. It transforms into stress, anxiety, worries. Um, that's called negative thoughts. And then the functional thoughts are more neutral. And the waste thoughts are not negative, but they are a uh, waste of energy. So they are th useless thoughts that are consuming my energy. And you will notice I'm using the word energy a lot because thoughts have those four characteristics. But the other dimension in our thoughts, which become very important, is that thoughts create what we call vibrations. They radiate. And we know that sometimes we're thinking of someone and that person can pick up the thought which is quite interesting. And we always feel that it's interesting when you're thinking of someone and that person is calling you and say, oh, I was just thinking of you just right now, and then you called. So thoughts can travel. We say they, they create vibration. But also thoughts uh, contain energy. And we find that very positive thoughts um, increase the energy of the self. We feel empowered with uh, the energy of thoughts. And this is why we want to create positive thoughts so the energy of the self, our enthusiasm, our happiness, our will, our motivation, just can become stronger and stronger. 
So in the process of meditation, um, the main ingredient will be our thinking. And I'm going to introduce um, in this session three um, parts of the self, which is really fundamental areas of our own being, our own self, which we tend not to pay attention to enough. Uh, physically, we know very well the different parts of the body. You can tell if, you, if your feet are hurting or if your stomach is empty or if your head is having a headache. You know very well different parts of the body which are creating uh, discomfort. Now, what about different parts of the self? Do we know when there's a difference between my emotions and just my thoughts? Are thoughts and emotion the same thing? So last week we made that uh, explanation that thoughts come with an emotion all the time. So there are thinking and there's a thinking and there's a feeling that comes with it. And this combination of thoughts and feelings is what we call the activities of the mind. And the mind is a beautiful, powerful part of the self, which has this characteristic that it never stops thinking. And we may try an exercise. If I were to ask you right now to stop thinking, how long will it last? It doesn't last very, very long, more than a second. I think we think almost every second, every second, second we're thinking. So we can't stop the mind from thinking, but we can direct the thoughts. We can choose what kind of thoughts we create. Not that it is easy, but we can do it. What we don't know is, can we really change our feelings? You know, it's so easy. You can, somebody will be worrying and you tell the person, oh, don't worry. Well, it's easy to say, but how can you tell someone not to worry? Because they must have, a ver they must have uh, a very good reason for worrying. So changing a thought eventually, okay, we can do that. But what about changing the feelings? Imagine somebody being really sad and you tell the person, oh, don't be sad, just be happy. Uh, okay, uh, is there a switch somewhere? Is there a cable you can connect and suddenly you're happy? It doesn't work like that. So usually feelings will be connected with our thoughts. And if we want to change our feelings, actually what we need to change most of the time is our thoughts. And that's where meditation becomes really interesting. But the mind is only one part of the self. And we ha can identify another part of the self, which we call the intellect. And the intellect is a very different uh, organ than the mind. Uh, I like this terminology, the organs of the self. We know the organs of the body, but the organs of the self is not like a belief system. It's just giving name to things that we can identify. We can hear our thoughts. We can feel our feelings. But what about this part that we call the intellect, which has the ability to understand, which is a very strange, uh, how to call it, uh, part of the self, my ability to understand. Just remember when somebody says something to you and you say, well, I don't understand. I don't know what you're talking about. Which means we're using an organ of the self that has the ability to understand. And that same organ has the ability to discern, uh, to make a decision, to have willpower, to want to say, okay, I want to do this, I'm going to do it. Who makes a decision? What part of the self makes a decision? This is just a terminology, but we call it the intellect. Very often people have thought that this is taken care of by the brain. And it's true that the brain, of course, has a big part of, um, you know, has a big role in that particular aspect. But really, if we think about what makes me understand, discern, decide, remember, uh, recognize right and wrong, this is what we call the faculty of the intellect, the organ of the intellect, which is a bit different from the mind. And then there's a third, <clears throat> sorry, there's a third part of the self, which we call the personality which is an entirely different area. Um, modern you know, psychology thought about the psyche, the conscious self, the subconscious self. 
my attitude, uh, my style, my way of being. We call it whatever we want. Sometimes we call it my habits. This is a completely different area than the intellect or the mind. It's called the personality. We sometimes call it also personality traits. They are basically habits, but they also translate into attitude, um, ways of you know, behaving, uh, personality traits. And these are very interesting because they are very, very strong. Uh, habits are very hard to change. Understanding needs learning, uh, new ideas. Mind is sometimes very hard to uh, control or change as well. Why we introduce those three aspects of the self is because they have a deep connection with one another. And we will find that uh, most people, when we were asked, why do we want to meditate? Many people want to feel relaxed, peaceful, you know, enjoy life a little bit better. But if we think about it, our life is designed by the state of mind that we have, the strength of the intellect, my ability to understand, discern, remember, concentrate, I mean, this is a very important faculty. And my quality of life depends on my attitude, my behavior, my habits, my personality. If meditation can impact those three areas, just imagine what we can do. And many people feel sometimes that it's very hard to change old habits, that it's very hard to change my way of thinking. And most importantly, most people don't want to change their personality. They are afraid that meditation might change their personality. I like this um, terminology, not that I want to change uh, my personality, but I want to improve it. And I want to make my personality um, useful for my own state of happiness, my own state of feeling, my own state of being. If my personality takes me into trouble all the time, if my habits uh, and my behavior creates conflict with other people all the time, I'm going to be the one suffering from it. So when we ask people, what do you want to do with meditation? If we look at those three uh, faculties of the self, we have a new possibility and a new application for meditation. What if meditation could create a mind or improve the mind in such a way that I have thoughts that generate high level of energy and beautiful emotions, peace, happiness, love. Imagine just that your mind is a perfect mind. This is a brand new mind. It's on sale at the moment at the meditation center uh, online. So imagine that you have a new mind available. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than something that you buy at IKEA and then you can put together, but we can help with the manual to make the mind work a little bit better. Imagine that we can have a mind that can really produce top quality thoughts, generate powerful feelings, and work well, basically. What if we could improve our intellect? So there could be higher concentration, clear discernment, always knowing what's right, what's wrong, knowing how to make a decision properly. Sometimes I find it very entertaining when you go for groceries and you see somebody in an aisle looking at all the cereal box. And um, I think in North America, we have a lot of cereal box on the shelves. And then the person is looking at the cereals and say, okay, this one is on sale, but this is a high calorie, but the price is good. This one is not on sale, the price is higher, but it's low calorie and there's no sugar, but there's gluten. And then you go on like this, and by the time you look at 20 different cereal boxes, you're so confused, you have no idea what to buy. So you go into another aisle and you actually buy, I don't know, fla uh, uh, oat or some other form of uh, breakfast. What is in trouble is the intellect. When the intellect cannot make a decision, it's because it's being troubled. So imagine if we could give the intellect the clarity that will generate concentration, discernment, judgment, uh, clear memories. This is the kind of intellect we would like to have. 
And the third aspect is the personality. Imagine that we can improve our personality so that suddenly we have an attitude of respect, an attitude of care, an attitude of uh, appreciation, an attitude of enthusiasm, an attitude of, um, uh, I don't know, appreciating other people more. I mean, that will be a personality certainly that will you know, help us to go through the day a little bit more easily than a negative personality. Now, this is what, for me anyway, this is what I've been searching through meditation from the beginning, understanding that um, if I change my diet, I'm going to impact my body. If I stop eating junk food or, you know, toxic food, ultimately my body is going to feel better. But now if I start to change my thoughts, my feelings, uh, my way of thinking, my way of understanding, and my way of behaving, just imagine what could be the transformation. So this is for me what really um, appealed to me in the concept of meditation. The interesting part of those three faculties is that they are deeply connected with one another. We saw last week about the mind. The mind can have different thoughts, different feelings. Now, the mind produces those thoughts all the time, all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. What we look at now is the fact that those thoughts feed the intellect. The intellect is this organ that has this ability to understand. But if the intellect is eating toxic thoughts for an hour, two hours, three hours, one day, three days, one week, imagine what kind of state the intellect will be in. And sometimes we don't realize that having negative thoughts not only creates maybe a negative feeling, but it starts to clutter my intellect. It starts to create blockages in my intellect so that my ability to discern is less. My ability to concentrate is less. My ability to um, make decision, my energy to exercise my will is less. And that's where the connection is between the quality of thoughts and feelings and the quality of my intellect. And then what happens is that if my intellect is confused, then what about my actions? What type of actions am I going to perform? if my intellect is confused. And it's very um, clear that people with an intellect that is confused behave in a way that is becoming less and less uh, positive. So they say wrong things, they do wrong things, and then as a consequence they get into trouble with people, with situations, with themselves, uh, at home, at work, uh, etc. And then that personality is being uh, reinforced. If I'm, let's say, lazy, and I have a tendency to be a bit lazy and always to procrastinate and say, oh, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I don't do it now. I'll do it tomorrow. That's my personality. So the thoughts I'm entertaining when the situation arises is lazy thoughts. Those lazy thoughts creates in the intellect weakness compared to um, enthusiastic thoughts. If you have the thought, yes, I want to do it, or yes, I'm going to do it, yeah, I should definitely do it. These kind of thoughts clear the intellect. But a thought which is more like, oh, I don't feel like doing it. Oh, this is too hard. I'll do it tomorrow. Anyway, it can wait. I don't feel like doing it. It reduces the energy of the intellect. And then the intellect makes the decision, oh, well, I'll do it tomorrow. So we postpone it again, and then we just procrastinate. And then we reinforce the habit of basically being lazy. And that laziness will, in its turn, generate more thoughts of laziness. So the dynamic between those three faculties of the self is actually that mind and feelings feed the intellect. Intellect ends up being either clear or confused, has an impact on the quality of the actions. The actions imprint the personality, and then the personality generates more thoughts.
thoughts. And when we understand this cycle, then we understand a little bit more where my thoughts are coming from. Because most people sometimes wonder where are these thoughts coming from? And actually the thoughts, we can pick them up from a lot of different sources. You can listen to the radio, you can read, you can talk to someone, you can hear somebody in the subway talking, and this will suddenly create thoughts. The self, the being, has memories. They can create thoughts. The intellect can create thoughts. I can remember certain things. It creates thoughts. But another area is my personality. And I always um, like that example because uh, I used to have a grandmother, which uh, I think when we were much younger, and uh, I think mostly when she was younger, <laughs> I think she was uh, enjoying the grandchildren, but maybe she felt the grandchildren was very demanding and very consuming in terms of sweets and whatever. So I don't know if she was hiding things, but I don't remember my grandmother when I was younger to be that generous. Uh, maybe it was us being more greedy, but um, I thought she was probably thinking, oh, my kid, the grandkids are coming. Oh, they're going to eat everything again. I don't know. Maybe that was her thoughts. So her attitude was maybe less sharing with us. But I remember when she got uh, older, I think she got way more generous and more and more all the time. So when she was really old, I think whenever she would um, welcome us, her main thought was always, what can I give them? What can I give them? What can I give? So personality generates a kind of thinking. Uh, if I'm a miser, it becomes my personality. That's the way I think. If I'm a very generous, philanthropic person, that will generate certain type of thoughts. Let's say I develop a personality of jealousy. And in relationship, I tend to be what we call jealous. And so every time my partner you know, is talking to someone or spending an evening with someone, I start having thought, oh, what did you do? And then what I just said, I start having thoughts. What did you do? Where did you go? Why did you spend time with that person? So the personality generates thoughts. Thoughts go into the intellect. Intellect digests those thoughts and then reinforces the personality. And this is what we call either the virtuous, uh, a vicious circle or a virtuous circle. And of course, I think that it becomes clear what meditation is all about is uh, interfering in that particular cycle so that we can sometimes break a negative cycle and say, oh, wait a minute. I'm in the uh, dynamic of having a personality driving my mind, my mind reinforcing my personality, and it's getting negative, more and more negative. I was sharing with someone uh, yesterday that, um, you know, if we see the defect in someone, what happens? You love someone, and we say that very often when you fall in love with someone, you, they say love makes you blind. So you love somebody, and then it's like a, a blank check. You know, I love you, and that's a blank check. And then after a while, suddenly things show up. Actually, they were always there, but we didn't see them. Why? There was a strong feeling of love. Feeling of love creates very beautiful thoughts, romantic, poetic, positive thoughts. Intellect becomes excited, right? Excited like the intellect feels, oh, I'm only thinking of that person because I love that person. So the intellect is creating connection, which we will call later yoga, with that person. And my personality becomes very harmonious with that person. Whatever that person says, oh, yeah, yeah, I like you, I like you very much. Whatever that person does, oh, yeah, I love you, oh, it's so sweet. The way the person dresses, oh, nice, everything is so nice. Yeah, that's called being in love. I don't know statistically how long it lasts, but I think it varies depending on the relationship. And so we use those thoughts, feelings, stimulates the intellect, creates harmony in the relationship. But one day, for strange reason, you're in love with that person, and then you meet somebody else, and they say, oh, yeah, your partner, yeah, she or he is very, very nice.
I, there was one thing I don't like about him. He's always late. And then you realize, oh, I ne never noticed. He's always late or she's always late. You didn't notice. Suddenly a thought was given to your mind. That person is always late. It never bothered you before. And then one day somebody gave you that thought and you had given an appointment to your beloved to be at the restaurant at such a time. And on that day, your beloved shows up late. And what happens? Then the thought comes, yeah, oh, my friend was right. She's, oh, he's late. So then that little, little thought goes into the intellect. And the intellect is using that thought. Yeah, it's a defect. It's, it's late. I was waiting. I didn't, you, you were late. So then we start saying it. We say to the person, you are late. Oh, the other person, I'm sorry. I was trying my best. And then you almost think in your head, yeah, but somebody told me you're always late. So I'm just inventing an example. I, it's not my issue at the moment, but uh, I'm sure it must be somebody's issues uh, at, the, at some point. But this just, it's just showing an example how just one thought suddenly creates something different. And I'm starting to see the defect. The next time the person that I love very much becomes late again, then you tell the person, yeah, but it's the second time you're late. During the three months period where you were madly in love, you never noticed that actually that person was late at every appointment, every date you had with that person, that person was late, but you never noticed. Now we start noticing, we start thinking about it, we start talking about it, and what happens? The cycle starts. And then we start seeing defects in the other person more and more, more and more, and what happens? Feelings will reduce, love will reduce, Thoughts will change, intellect will change, relationship will change. It's just a pattern. But we're not aware of that. And we think that the fault is on the other person. Because the other person is late, I'm not happy. And because I'm not happy, then it's changing the relationship. And one day, I mean, I'm just making it bigger than it is, but add a lot of things and maybe one day you have big issues with the person saying there are many things we should discuss now. These things were there in the first day. But why is it that after a few years it becomes such a big issue that sometimes we break relationships? It's just a pattern. So now go back to meditation. Why do we meditate? Because we want to recreate harmony in the self. And we want to create what we call here mastery over the self, which is a big um, objective. But it's kind of a very uh, beautiful one, actually, and very tempting one. This is why we call this meditation Raja Yoga Meditation. So yoga means, as I mentioned last week, connection. We want to create a higher connection within ourselves. We want to be connected with the self in such a way that we know what's happening within myself. And if I have a negative feeling, I want to know why do I have a negative feeling? Where does it come from? And what do I do with it? So this is what we call connection, yoga. And Raja becomes then, well, I want to regenerate that harmony within myself, that mastery over the self. Uh, I have many talents. And I could tell you about it, but that's not the point tonight. So, But I have one missing talent, which is uh, mechanic. And so if my car stops functioning, most likely I may be in a male physical body, but I might just go out of the car and try to save my own uh, image and uh, reputation. I'll open the hood, look around, and I don't think I can do much more than that because I have I will have no clue of what's in there. You know, I look in the, the under the hood, and yeah, I know there's an engine and there's all kind of things, but I have no idea how it works. So if the car breaks down, I open the hood. I have no idea what to do, and I'm useless. I have to call a mechanic, and he might tell me, yeah, but you, it's so simple. You know, you just need to adjust this, and the car will start again. Now, when we start having negative feelings or something goes wrong during the day, 
It's exactly the same situation. And if we are not connected, if we are not aware, if we are not equipped, you might open the hood of your brain and look in there and say, I don't know, I'm feeling so depressed today. And you have no idea why. Or we may blame the wrong uh, causes. Oh, I'm depressed because the person said this. Oh, I'm depressed because this happened. But actually, what happens, what's being said, is not what should really control my own inner being. Because what we believe in this uh, practice is that I can regain control over what's happening within me, regardless of what's happening on the outside. Now, it might sound very, a very simple thing to say, but actually it's a little tricky thing to accomplish. But this is what the whole spiritual journey is really basically all about, to regain that mastery. Now, I'm aware that I'm talking, talking, talking. Um, just want to pause one minute and give you a chance to either ask a question, interact. Uh, again, if you're watching this video about 10 years from the time I spoke, uh, you might want to write to somewhere. Um, but if you're watching live and you want to interact, you're very welcome to do so. I might just, um, during the time you think about it, um, propose to you to do a little meditation exercise so we can just experience uh, these three faculties that I just uh, spoke about. Hope it's fine with you. So let's pause again, just very, very simply. Don't need to move much from your chair. Just sit the way you are. I'm just going to take you through the process again in a very simple way. So just sit comfortably, feel relaxed. And I'm not even changing my physical posture. Just become aware of your physical energy. Just send a thought to your body with the feeling that I'm becoming relaxed. Actually, we are already relaxed. And now I'm focusing on the mind. Just becoming aware of my thoughts one thought at a time. And I'm just going to generate thoughts of peace. Saying to my mind that I want to feel peace of mind. How beautiful it is when my mind becomes peaceful. No unnecessary thoughts, no need to think about the past, nothing. Just one thought. I have peace within myself. And my thought is peaceful. And I experience how the speed of thoughts slows down one at a time, quietly. I have thoughts of peace. And I know that my feeling becomes a feeling of peace, just stillness. Silence, peace. And I imagine that from my mind comes a beautiful ray of light, just like a river of light. And it opens up my intellect with light. There is peace, and my intellect is so clear. I feel totally free. 
There's no tension, no questions. My mind is peaceful and my intellect is clear. My awareness is clear. My focus is clear. And I just feel energy increasing in myself. Positive energy. And I know that when I have clear thinking and positive thinking, everything I'm going to do is going to express that. And whatever I'm going to say to others will be positive. And my way of behaving will be aligned with my inner qualities and I will feel good about who I am, what I am and how I express that. So from that peaceful mind and from that clear intellect my personality will connect with self-respect, self-confidence, and an attitude of respect for all. I'm trying to hear your thoughts, but it's a little bit difficult. So I'm hearing mine, and I hope your thoughts are also enjoyable, and you can feel that, you know, just using a few thoughts can make such a difference. And uh, for me, I've been practicing this meditation for a long time, and I'm always, always, always enthusiastic about rediscovering every, not every meditation, of course, some days, it's like everybody else, there's some days where it doesn't work as well as others, but most of the time when I feel that energy, you know, building up in the self and when that meditation really kicks in, it's just always an amazement about what we can produce. And the beauty of a peaceful mind is, well, this is what people are searching for. They want peace of mind, isn't it? And when you experience that peace in the mind, well, it's just, uh, I don't know, I, this, uh, I guess I'm smiling right now, no? It's just smile that comes on your face. And when clarity is in intellect, what else do you expect? There's no doubt, there's no worry. You feel that whatever thought I need, it will come. This is what a clear intellect does. You feel that if there's a problem, there will be a solution. If there is a situation, there will be a proper reaction and it becomes you know almost a game the way to think the way to react and then we find i find for me that the meditation is almost invisible but uh when i start interacting with other people that energy of meditation becomes visible and people say sometimes you're very quiet you're very peaceful you're very positive you're always in a good mood you're always smiling yeah, I guess I am, <laughs> if I'm maintaining that um, level of energy. We thought about, you know, peaceful thought, positive thoughts, but in the advanced course, we'll talk about something even more interesting. What about pure thoughts, elevated thoughts, dignifying thoughts? You know, these are like, why not? These are very, very beautiful, uh, I would say, uh, resources that we can use to build that happiness within the self. 
And I find that most people spend their whole life searching for happiness outside, in food, in relationships, in movies, in cars, in everything. And it's not that it's not um, um, good or beneficial to inter in, interact with that. Of course we do that. And of course I enjoy playing sport or going for movies or whatever. It's many things in life are wonderful. But if I make that the condition of my happiness, it's very dangerous. And I find that Raja Yoga, connecting the self on a higher level of consciousness in order to regenerate that Raja within, uh, for me, is a more reliable source of happiness on the long term. And it, go, it goes both ways, deep inside, but also in my interaction. Of course, I you know, expect an evening with friends to generate happiness and comfort. But I'm sure we've experienced many times discussion with friends that turn a little bit funny and then you, whoops, enter a discussion that you, you know it's not necessarily positive. Now, are we equipped internally to react at that time in such a way that I don't allow my feelings, my mind, my intellect and my personality to break that moment in such a way that I take sorrow from that moment and I feel unhappy because of that moment. And if we can do that, I find that this is what uh, a good meditation will produce. My ability to generate energy, ideas, feelings, awareness, so I can interact better with the world outside. So mind, intellect, and my personality, uh, my personality traits or my habits. When these three faculties start to work together in a way which generates harmony, happiness, energy, pa uh, peace, power, etc., well, I find that this is really worth exploring. And so the, the process of our meditation will be to find how to generate that positivity within the self. And meditation is going to be based on what? Generating specific thoughts that will create that virtuous or that positive circle or cycle within the self. And this is why we find it's very important in meditation to learn uh, more, to take some information in so that I have that motivation. I have to be exposed to that positivity so I can use it internally and uh, Im improve my own personality. So where do we get that positivity and that uh, information? Well, this is what we uh, use for uh, that philosophy that we use, that uh, learning that we find is so important on a permanent basis. So I don't know if you have any questions or any thoughts or any ideas, but I'll be happy to uh, answer any of these. Or I will take for granted that it's so clear that you find it very, very um, good and useful and we'll be continuing uh, the journey next week as well. Um, if uh, you want to write, I invite you to do so to the email address you might see, hub at ca.brahmakumaris.org. Uh, uh, what um, I will share next time, uh, it's going to be about maintaining that awareness and how on a very daily basis we can practice meditation and maintain that awareness. So we'll be looking at different techniques of meditation. Um, Sometimes we talk about visualization, about uh, reflection, uh, about focusing on certain levels of um, energy, uh, strength, uh, virtues, ideas, etc. And we'll find that uh, there are different approaches in meditation based on how do we feel. I'll leave you with just one last example that I feel illustrates the process that I've been sharing tonight or today. Uh, you know, sometimes, I'm sure like myself, uh, some days you feel tired. And my personal um, uh, explore <clears throat> exploration was, you know, if you are tired in the morning, the day is going to be very long and very painful. 
And sometimes what I was uh, aware of was that my mind was creating the thought, oh, I'm so tired, oh, I'm so tired, I'm so tired. And that thought, one day I realized, is just making me more tired. Because in the process of the uh, thinking, you have the thought, your intellect feels weaker, and then what, how do you behave? People say, how do you feel? Oh, I'm so tired today. And then your body becomes like that. And then we become like that. And then at work we say, oh, I don't feel like working, I'm tired. I'm sure you know that pattern as well as I do. Just realize what kind of thoughts we can use when we feel that tiredness, when we are tired. And to me, that's been one of the best discovery of the last uh, two, three years. And I suddenly thought one day, why if I change my thought? And instead of saying, oh, how tired I am, what if you use the thought, oh, how well I'm going to sleep tonight? And I'm just challenging you to try that thought. Next time you feel tired, use that thought. Don't say, I'm tired, but use the thought, this is going to be so good tonight. And as soon as we change that thought, look at what happened. In the light of those three faculties we'll be talking about, your thought I'm going to sleep very well tonight. I feel, oh, this is going to be such a great night. That thought generates a different feeling, a positive feeling. It will create enthusiasm in the intellect, clarity of the intellect, then change of behavior. And that change of behavior will change my thinking. So it's just a very simple, practical application. But if you try that, um, I'll be looking forward to sharing uh, your sharing your experience next week on the, online as well. So Lynn, yes, there's someone interacting. I'm not alone. There's somebody reacting. <laughs> yes. So we have a question from Sangeeta uh, from At Ottawa, in Ottawa. And the question is, how do you respectfully not get caught up in a very negative conversation uh, to not get caught up and affected by it? Well, it's a very good question. Thank you. That gave me a chance to drink a little bit of water. Uh, well, I think it's a situation we all get into on you know, a regular basis. You go into a conversation, and before you know, gossiping, people criticizing others, and then you feel you're caught into it. And they most of the time ask you for approbation, and they say, you're right. You know? it's, uh, this is like this, and they want you to engage into it. Well, I find that you know, um, the different ways of approaching it. Sometimes I personally suggest just to look at things differently. And I interject with information. I use my own understanding to create a different dynamic in the discussion. So I become a very active actor in the discussion. I only do that when I'm in really good mood, <laughs> when I'm really <laughs> with energy, and that I feel I'm going to be, you know, um, controlling a little bit the discussion, and I can do it. Sometimes I feel I know I can't do it. I know they're really into their thing. They're very sensitive. It might be on the political issues or tackling religious issues. So I know it's a mind field, and whatever you say, it's going just to create disturbance. So at that time, maybe I use a more introspective attitude, quiet, and um, you know, just being less interactive with other people, but very active mentally. And then I start to generate the thought, Eric, don't be negative. Just have good wishes. Just be silent. Share some silence with the person uh, in my attitude. And they may sometimes say, oh, why don't you have anything to share? Then I might just say, you know, I really feel that uh, for me, I prefer to be uh, a little bit more thinking about it. You know, I need to think about it. And so I kind of withdraw a little bit. And to be very honest, at some point, I just find a way to excuse myself. I don't have to stay exposed to intense negative thinking or discussion. So I find very, very polite ways to say, you know, I really need to make a phone call. And it's always true. There's always that thing, a phone call to make somewhere anyway. <laughs> or I can always say, you know, I really have to answer someone on an email. It's always true. I never lie. I don't like lying uh, like this. So I find 
a useful, convenient truth to share at that time and to really basically excuse myself. And um, depending on sort of third option, if I'm really close term with some people, I sometimes say very openly, you know, at that time, I don't think it's useful to go into that negativity. And I think that we are just increasing the negativity and there's enough negativity on earth that we should be really changing the way we think and talk about this situation. This third option is risky and I use it only when I'm very comfortable with good friends. And um, you know my experience also in the long term is that if we really generate an attitude which is positive over the long term, people will feel very discomfort uh, uncomfortable going into these discussions in front of us. And for me, I don't know, maybe it's been too long, but I tend to generate the, um, uh, I would call it the priest reaction. And it happens to me very often at work, for example. I don't know, I shouldn't say that because people might be watching afterwards from work, but <laughs> it happens sometimes that I'm in a meeting or somewhere and then somebody goes, rah, 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 and they turn towards me and say, oh, sorry, Eric. And if they swear in particular, they always apologize to me. And I always feel, why do you apologize to me? We're five in the room. You can apologize to the you know, four of us. But I think that's after a while we generate an energy which people feel don't match negativity. And sometimes naturally they will feel, oh, sorry, and they will react as if they shouldn't behave negatively towards us. That's to me as a sign that without having to say anything, I will create uh, discomfort in other people when they become negative. Doesn't happen all the time, but I find that sometimes I generate that aura that people don't feel that they uh, they will feel right, you know, being negative uh, in front of me. So you have different options, being taking control of the discussion and telling them why I want to be positive, being introverted, excusing myself, or just creating strong vibrations where they feel sorry for being negative. I see. Uh, there was, um, there is a, a comment from Jason. He says, uh, "Beautifully elevating." I can't wait to apply apply to my mind, thoughts, personality, starting now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and we're very happy, Jason, you're online because um, when we heard about your uh, interest. That's what, to be very honest, generated that interest for me to we have to connect with, uh, you know, friends like you. So I'm looking forward to connect with you more and more and very glad we can do that in this totally different format. And uh, I'm getting used to it. So now every time I see a camera somewhere, I'm going to start talking in front of it, <laughs> see what happens. I know I really appreciate that you all joined again uh, today and I hope that uh, we can continue this conversation um, next time. So it could be a click away from you or a week away from, from now or just a second away since uh, Lynn sees something else. It's good. All right. So glad that we can spend that uh, time together and uh, we'll, uh, next week will be actually much longer meditation. We'll really explore the application but for this week i really invite you to just you know think about what we shared identify mind intellect personality try to see a little bit more the connection between the three and just try to practice one of these thoughts you know if you are tired think differently see what the new thought generates in you and if you're facing a situation just ask yourself what kind of thought i can change and try to see if it changes your feeling, your perspective, and your attitude. And if that can be identified, well, we'll give you, um, what can we give them? Uh, can I give you sweets? Because it doesn't go through the camera, but we'll give you something. We'll find a blessing. <laughs> all right. Good to see you all, and then uh, we'll connect again next time.